Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Israel Brief. I'm your host, Jolene Marks, and as you can see, I am back in Modi in Israel after 18 hours of traveling from Sydney to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Tel Aviv. I am absolutely exhausted, but uh, exhilarated after a really, really great trip to Australia and uh, cannot wait to bring you today's news headlines. So the top story is, and it, uh, uh, you know, if you're missing your Game of Thrones because the series has now ended, you need look no further than uh, Israeli politics and the goings on at the Knesset. So where we stand at the moment is that Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu has not managed to form a working government or a coalition. And the Knesset voted uh, today to dissolve the government, which means that uh, should this vote pass a second time in the Knesset tomorrow, it is likely that Israelis head back to the polls. And one of the dates being mentioned, but not confirmed, discussed, but not confirmed, could be the 17th of September, should we go forward with this. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting that this comes less than two months after Prime Minister Netanyahu and his Likud party won a very, very hot uh, election on the 9th of April. So uh, it is very, very exciting. The great hold-up is the fact that uh, uh, many of the leaders of various political parties are squabbling on a major issue, which is the drafting of the ultra-Orthodox to the IDF. But uh, in news, it could only happen in Israel. It looks like the Kulanu party could join with the Likud party, uh, which makes the, the bloc a little bit more right-leaning, but also upsets members of the Likud because certain seats uh, uh, that they have won could go to members of the Kulanu party. Very intriguing. Lots of movement. We'll keep an eye on this. But now turning to Bahrain, and we've been chatting a lot about the fact that Bahrain will host an economic confab on the 25th and 26th of June. And to me, it's, it, it's history in the making. Did we ever think we would see the day where Israel, at the behest of the United States and the Kingdom of Bahrain, will host a, uh, a gathering of uh, Arab leaders, the United States, Israel, and of course the Palestinians have been asked to discuss ways that the economic situation in Gaza and the West Bank could be significantly improved. Now, Prime Minister, uh, or, or sorry, Palestinian Authority, excuse me, I'm very jet lag. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has said that the Trump peace plan and the Bahrain conference will go to hell and is advocating a boycott. And it, uh, it, it's great, this, um, it, it makes us sad that before even hearing the terms of the Trump peace plan or, or, or what leaders will be proposing at the Bahrain conference, and this includes countries like Saudi Arabia, the Palestinians have already, before hearing anything, have decided to opt out, which uh, goes to show you that uh, throughout the history, one of the major stumbling blocks to peace is the unwillingness of the Palestinians to come to any negotiating table. But uh, we end today's brief on... Um, uh, a very, very troubling note, and that is in Vienna, uh, on a street of Vienna, a very, very prominent, significant street, an exhibition of Holocaust survivors by uh, the artist uh, Luigi Toscano have been defaced uh, for at least three times with swastikas and other inflammatory language. And uh, this has led the artist to say, you know, what is wrong with the Austrian people? And it follows a recent poll where a number of Austrian people, especially the younger generation, are actually not aware of the Holocaust and Austria's role in the genocide of the Jewish people. And uh, the images of these portraits of Holocaust survivors being defaced is greatly, greatly upsetting. However, it must be noted that the government of Austria has condemned this and uh, many have taken to the streets in a vigil in support of the Jewish community and in condemnation of this flagrant act of uh, anti-Semitism, as well as uh, groups who are forming guards 24-7 to make sure that these posters are not defaced again. 
So before I dash off to get some much needed rest, I just want to remind you that you can check out Lay of the Land's content online at www.layoftheland.online. Uh, don't forget that you can read our voices from the Arab world and this week they're talking about why Iran is imploding. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at Lottle Site, which is where we post a, a lot of our content on a daily basis. And if you like getting your daily um, dose of the Israel Brief, click on the subscribe button below to be notified when a brief is ready. I'm Rolene Marks. This is Lay of the Lad, back in Israel, no traveling for a while, and uh, we'll chat again tomorrow.